Good morning, everyone. I welcome you to this uh, third Sunday of Easter service. I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us hear this word from Psalm 116. The writer wrote this, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I call on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people, in the court of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. My friend, Join me into the call to worship that you have in front of you. The risen Christ call us by our name. As Easter people, we come to worship God. The wounded and suffering Messiah calls us from our homes. As Easter people, we come to worship God. The God of new life call us to this place. As Easter people, we come to worship God. In the name of the risen Christ, let us worship. Let us pray together. O oh God, you come to the disciples and offer them Easter assurance. You came to Thomas and offer him resurrection hope. Come to us in this time of worship and fill us with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our first hymn is taken from Voices United 179. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks.
as usual when we come before the Lord we always come sometime with a heavy heart but the worship is to give us that opportunity to lay down those heavy hearts at the table of the Lord and leave the place of worship with the assurance this assurance that the Lord has forgiven forgiven us that we are free and our shoulder are lighter than before we start the worship so friends Together, let us confess our shortcomings, recalling the words of Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace be with you. Yet, sometimes we sow discord, neglecting to make peace with our sisters and brothers. Jesus said, as God has sent me, so I send you. Yet, sometimes you refuse to go, fearing to follow unknown path of faith. Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit but we turn away rejecting the gift of the Spirit for all those shortcomings let us take a moment of silence and to go through our whole week and to see where we are falling short and ask for forgiveness. Let us take a moment. And together, let us say, forgive us resurrected Christ, in your name we pray. Amen. And friend, hear these words of assurance. In any person and in all circumstances, God works with wondrous power, forgiving us, renewing us, and restoring us, reconciling us to one another and to God. My friends, with assurance I can tell you that we are forgiven. Glory to the resurrected Christ. Indeed, in Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. If you have your family members with you at this moment. I want you to share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of God be with you. The first reading is from Act 2, 14, 36 to 41. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you sacrificed, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who far off, for all whom the Lord, uh, Lord, 
Lord our God will come. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from, from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their numbers that day. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from 1 Peter 1, 17 to 23. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in revent fear. For you know that it is not with perishable things such as gold, silver, or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another, one another deeply from the heart. From, from you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of unperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is from Luke 24, 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked? About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deep, deed before God and all the people. The chief priest and our ruler handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who is going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of, our, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found out it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as, he, as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we come to you again this morning asking for your spirit to be upon us. Come, O Lord, may your spirit be upon me so that my word and my meditation be acceptable unto you. In your holy name I pray. Amen. My friends, I don't know that during this uh, very troubled time, trouble can be more trouble than COVID-19. When uh, this week we hear the news of this man, 51 years old, who killed 20 people in Nova Scotia. When the world and our country is still dealing with COVID-19. I was working with uh, my wife when she asked me, and what did you heard? What happened? And I said, what are you talking about? And she told me the story. At once when we get home, I went and looked at the news. Indeed, my heart was saddened. I pray for all the people and their families who not only had to deal with the COVID-19, but now a shooter for what reason. Nobody knows. It seems to me that the hope of the resurrection for this family is almost gone. But my friends, this is without counting our God who is bigger than our lives. I have a, a friend of mine who posted something on Facebook and he said at the end, where was God in all this? And he answered, God was in the midst of all our suffering. This brings me to what I want to share with you this morning. In the midst of all this sadness, how could we define ourselves as Easter people? For some, being Easter people is to profoundly believe in the resurrection of Christ as a faction. For some is to experience the living word of Christ giving us a hope whatever happened. You know, when our heart is troubled, it's like a veil in front of our heart and we don't see clearly. That's exactly maybe what happened in the road of Emmaus. When these disciples are walking, talking about what happened 
in Jerusalem. But they didn't fully understand the message. They couldn't understand what the death and the resurrection of Christ means. So Christ appeared to them. But they didn't know that that was Christ. Their hearts were still veiled. So Christ walked with them. So Christ started walking with them where they were. And slowly but surely tell them, recount them the story of what the prophets have said about the Messiah and how the words of the prophet has been fulfilled in the suffering and the death and the glorious resurrection of the Messiah. But behold, the people, his disciples, didn't recognize him right away. Although they have heard the story, they couldn't tell who was telling them that story until the moment that he break the bread with them. At that moment, their eyes were open and they saw Christ, they recognized Christ. What happened to them? Why they couldn't recognize Christ when Christ was walking with them? Maybe they took him just like other prophets or somebody who is just from Jerusalem or heard about this whole story and just recounting it to them. But in the simple gesture that they are used to when Christ was alive with them, which is the breaking of the bread, they recognize the sign of Christ. So, I believe, I believe, that we see Christ in the breaking of the bread with one another. Maybe at this time we cannot break the bread together physically, but breaking of the bread for me means sharing, sharing the good news sharing into the suffering, partaking into the suffering of one another, partaking into the joy of one another, partaking in the challenges of one another, sharing the heavy load of one another. So is there something that we can say in the double suffering of the people of Nova Scotia this morning. Yes. We can recognize Christ at this moment by sharing with them our profound and sincere prayer. We can share with them and partake in the same suffering, but also share with them the hope of resurrection. Where was Christ in all this? One of my friends asked, Christ is in the midst of this. You know, what I like also in the story of the road to Emmaus, is the fact that Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, met his disciple where 
they were in their faith journey. He didn't meet them ahead of them. He was not ahead of them. The story said that he walked with them. So for me, in order for us to share the bread, to share the hope, to partake in the suffering of one another, we need to walk with one another, to meet one another where each of us are in our faith journey. And then recount to ourselves the hope of the Lord. You know, the psalm that we read this morning, Psalm 116, said that in time of trouble, I call upon the Lord. But then he said, how can I pay the Lord back for all God's goodness? The psalmist responds, I will fulfill my vows. And at the end, he said, praise the Lord. That's very optimistic for somebody who has been suffering, has been crying, has seen death so close to him, to say at the end, how can I pay the Lord back? It's because the Lord did not forsake him. The Lord did not let him down. So, my friends, whatever is happening in your life right now, whatever the trouble is, not only the COVID-19 trouble, but your personal trouble. Because COVID-19 didn't take away our personal trouble, our personal disease, our personal suffering, our personal family situations. Maybe it gets it even worse. But I want to tell you this morning that in all that, there is a hope. In all that, God can give new life. In all that, God forgives. In all, God embraces us. We are not and will never be forsaken. My friends, maybe you are on your road to your own Emmaus. I want to ask you to let Christ meet you where you are. Not where somebody is in their faith journey. No, where you are. With all your doubts. With all your troubles. Just who you are. But let God meet you. Let the resurrected Christ journey with you. And let you open your heart to share in the bread with Christ. My friends, I pray the Lord for all our friends from Nova Scotia and all who are suffering or whose suffering are worsened by the COVID-19. May the Lord meet you and journey with you and show the Lord face to you by sharing the bread with you as you are sharing, partaking in the hope of resurrection. May God bless you. Amen. 
Let us pray. God of repentance and forgiveness, your message of Easter is a, a challenging one for us, especially in this time of suffering. We do not understand the hope that we bring, you bring to us. We don't know. Maybe we don't have to understand it all. But we ask you to open our hearts to you, to your message in all circumstances. Holy One, by your Holy Spirit, empower us to proclaim to everyone the Easter message, the Easter gospel. Help us ourselves to be Easter people, to turn our lives to you. Merciful God, we pray at this moment, lift up to you the names of the people who die tragically in Nova Scotia. Holy One, these innocent people who fall under the shotgun of this man. May you receive them in your peace. As we struggle to understand what happened, why? Maybe we never found the reasons. So that's why we are bringing each of them and their families to you. Comfort them. Be with them. Holy One, I pray for the member of RCMP and all the police and everybody who has been involved in these situations. I pray also for those who make decisions, especially in this time of COVID-19, our doctors, our nurses, our frontline fighters, all the people who are putting their lives in danger to help us go through this crisis. Holy One, we pray for those who are really doing some heavy research to find a vaccine and a cure for this disease. Holy One, you are the creator of all. You are the one who eliminated us. Give them the knowledge and the tools. Holy One, I pray for all our elderly people, those who are shut in, those who have nobody to call them, those who are in fear. Holy One, be their Christ. Be with them. For all the prayer that we hold dear in our hearts, the one that we voice and the one that we don't, the one that we don't even want to voice. I pray that you answer them. You bring all our prayers in the one that you taught us as we say together, our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth what is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Amen and Amen. Our last game this morning is taken from Voices United. Voices United 5, 9 of 5. We are pilgrims. service I just want to say thank you before I close to our organist Gordon to all the people who contribute to the music I say thank you to Guillaume and Daniel for still being uh, at the background working tirelessly to put the service together I say thank you to my boys who have been uh, my uh, uh, readers uh, this week again. I want to say also thank you to our session and board member who are continuously uh, calling uh, our people and make sure that they are not alone. Let us uh, receive the final blessings. Go forth to live the resurrection of Christ. In the name of God, who make us in the name of Christ who makes us free in the name of the Holy Spirit who make us one go forth in the name of the risen Christ may the peace of God who surpasses all understanding be with you until we meet again Amen, Amen.